Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett and today I'm going to show you how I make a sword in Fusion 360. Now, um, obviously this isn't going to be like a real sword or anything like that. It's going to be mostly for prop purposes. So like if you're doing cosplay or just want to have a cool looking sword hanging around, I'm going to show you how I go about making them. And um, I'm actually going to have multiple parts to this um, video. It might, it's more, sort of a video series. Um, the first one I will be showing you how to model this katana. So uh, we'll actually be tracing this image and creating the sword in Fusion 360 from that. Um, in part two, I'm going to show you how to make a broadsword. And for that one, I'm gonna just try to free model it and not trace anything, so I'll show you my process um, for that. And then in part three, I'm going to show you how to break up these swords and make them um, printer friendly. So um, print in multiple pieces and hopefully add in some things to make them go together just a little bit easier. And part two should be coming out next week and part three the week after that. So let's take this image, get Fusion 360 opened up, and let's get started. And as I mentioned, we are going to be doing this in Fusion 360. If you don't know what that is, there's a link in the description. You can go download it and start using it for free. Okay, so first thing we need to do is import the picture. So to do that, we come up to this insert menu here and then go attached canvas. So the first thing it wants from you is a face, and I'm just going to select the ground plane here. And then um, you can click this little image thing right here to select the image. And as soon as you do, it'll just bring up a normal fi file browser window and you can select your file. I'm not going to show you that because I've got some other project stuff in there that I don't want to give away yet. And then you'll see that it um, shows up on the ground over here. Now it's pretty small, so I'm going to scale it up a little bit. Don't worry too much about the size right here. And then I'm actually going to rotate it just a bit right there I'll just go 90 degrees for the right this second um, and then what you're gonna want to do is come over to this canvas opacity and bring that down to around 60 doesn't need to be exact and then check display through so that will allow us to see this image um, through the model and vice versa so now we need to straighten the image out just a bit so what I'm gonna do is zoom in and um, just kinda keep rotating until I get it pretty straight Okay, so I think that is fine. Um, this doesn't need to be perfectly exact, but the closer it is, um, it'll just make your life a little bit easier in the end. So I'll go ahead and hit enter, and now we have this canvas, and you can see it's a little lopsided, but that's fine. Um, the sword is what we're gonna be focusing on. So next, what we're gonna wanna do is come into the sketch menu, create sketch, and we'll select the ground plane, the same plane that the image is on. Now we're just going to pretty much start tracing this. And now this is a real image of a real sword. So um, you, know, you do have to deal with things like perspective and things like that. So like this is going to be a perfect disc. But um, from this view it looks like an oval. So just be aware that there are things like that. And kind of know how a sword um, is laid out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit L to go into the line tool. And I am going to section off this um, bottom piece here and then I will um, bring it straight up to around this top area and I'll just go straight across so then we're just gonna come down and um, meet that one to create kind of a little oblong box here and for this bottom piece we are going to use splines but these literally just trace the outside fusions pretty smart about knowing um, how the curve goes so just place dots along the outside of it and it should be pretty dang close and I want to even this out just a skosh because um, the image isn't perfect on it. And then we'll come up here to this top part. We'll go back to the line tool and we'll just section off this area here. And a fun trick, if you ever want to be perfectly over another line, just go down and meet it with your cursor so you're hovering over it. And then as you drag up, you'll see a little blue dotted line there. And that will tell you that you are right above that dot. So you can see it kind of snaps to 90 degrees there, and that's just about perfect. So then we can come down, meet that, and we have a perfect box right above it. And now comes this little um, guard part. And since this is a perfect cylinder, what we're gonna do is create another box. I'm just gonna come out to um, pretty much the edge of it and create something to this effect. And actually for this one, we are going to be revolving it. So um, let's put a line right in the middle of it. And another fun little trick, if you're hovering over the line, you'll see a little X on it that's telling you you're gonna snap to that line. 
but as you keep going once you find the center of the line a little triangle will pop up right there letting you know that you're in the center so i'll just click there drag straight down now here's something a little bit interesting as well um, in this image you can see that this edge of the um, guard is a little bit longer than this one so since i used this top line here to find the center when i revolve this it'll actually be offset from this down here and we don't want that so i'm actually going to delete that and i'm going to come back into the line tool and find the um the center of this line right here rather than the top one and that should give us a closer approximation of where we actually want the middle to be so then we just come in and kind of trace this um, don't worry too much about it being exact I'm actually going to delete that top part and go in with splines to get sort of that curvature that they have there that looks good and for the actual blade here we're just going to use splines and trace all the way up And then this top part here, I'm actually going to click OK. And then I'm going to cut it off a little bit before the tip. And you'll see why I do that in just a bit. So then I will just trace the um, back of it as well. OK, so now let's just come back to the top and close this in. That looks like a pretty good shape and I think we have mostly everything blocked in. So now we just begin the process of extruding. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sketch. It's gonna take us back out into the 3D mode. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is revolve this um, hand guard because uh, that's a really easy way to tell kind of the proportions of the rest of it and how big that should be. So I'm gonna select that piece, come up to create, um, revolve, and then I will click axis over here and this center piece that we created there so then I will hit OK and that gives us the hand guard and then fusion um, automatically hides the sketch after you've extruded something from it so just bring that back by clicking the little eye, uh, light bulb over there I'm gonna select these pieces and uh, bring them up so then I'll go press pull let's see what one looks like that's probably pretty close um, since we revolved this, we'll want to make sure that everything is symmetric. And, you know, maybe instead of 1, I might go 0 0.8, just because that looks pretty thick for a handle. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. Oh, and I accidentally clicked Cut. So I'm going to go back into that and go, um, I'm just going to go New Body for the time being. And then I can come to this um, bottom piece down here. I'm going to extrude it uh, maybe 0 0.85. So it's up just a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go new body, make sure it's symmetric, hit okay. So that'll allow us to keep um, sort of a different spot there for that. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process throughout the rest of the sword. Should be pretty simple. Now the blade's obviously gonna be uh, quite a bit smaller than the rest of the handle. So maybe I'll go 0 0.5 there, see how that looks symmetric. I think that actually looks fine. I'm gonna go new body. And then for the actual blade, I'll go 0 0.4 and see how that looks. Now something to keep in mind um, is that you're not going to be able to have a perfect blade on this. You're going to have to print it just a little bit thicker because of um, the, the whole 3D printing process and how things have to go together. Um, something that small would be very flimsy and probably break. But um, your mileage may vary, so do what you think is best there. So I think that actually will work. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK, make sure it's new body. Um, and now I can hide the image in the back. We can see that we have um, a pretty decent start to a sword there. I'm actually gonna hide the sketch as well. So first thing I'm gonna do is um, fillet these edges here. Make sure I say fillet because I said fillet in some of my earlier videos and I get comments all the time saying, or telling me how to pronounce it. So with things like this, I usually just go through and experiment with how far the fillet will let me go. Because um, if I go 0 0.9, that is too far. And that's because the two sides have come together. So if I go 0 0.7, you can see that there's a little gap right there between the two um, curved edges. 
So if I go 0 0.8, that has come together. So I think that's actually what I'm gonna do. I'll just hit okay. I will um, do the same for these two things just to see um, kind of what I can get this to look like. So I think that's okay. I may try to come in and just fill it the um, remaining edges here and see how that treats me. It'll probably just be a really small fillet. Actually, since you can see these little edges here, I think I'm going to scale this. So I'll hit OK, bring back that, and see how we're looking. I think that actually looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do um, the same thing here, fillet. You'll find that this is most of what, you'll, what you're doing. You'll just get the main shape. And then you'll come in and fill it and chamfer just to make it look nice. This one should be quite a bit less, so let's try a 0.2. And I think that's actually good, so I'll hit OK. OK, so now the sword is a little bit trickier. Um, most swords kind of get sharper as you go up, so if you want, you can try to add a draft. And then I think for the face, I'm just going to select that right there because that's what it's letting me select. Um, and then, or that, sorry, that was the plane, and then this will be the face, 0 0.01, something like that is good, and then we'll do the same for the other side. We'll go negative 0.1 for that one. Now pretty much the only thing left is to actually um, do the chamfer, and that's going to give us the, uh, the blade appearance. So I'm going to come through and hold shift to select all these. I am not going to be sh um, selecting the point up there and I'm gonna go chamfer. Now this one you're actually gonna to wanna to go um, probably two distances, and um, we're basically just going to experiment to see how far fusion will let us go. Point three will give us very close to a, an actual bladed edge. Drag this um, inner one in a little bit till we can get sort of the blade shape that we want. Oh, and this one's actually being quite a bit nicer to me than the previous ones I've made. I guess your mileage will vary with that slice on the top, but um, we can fix that in a second anyway. You know what? I think that is actually pretty darn good right there. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK. Now we can come in and I'll show you how to fix this uh, little thing on the top here. Just select that. And then I'm just going to press pull this. You can see it'll let it it'll let you bring it back out to a point. So I'll hit OK there. So that is pretty much the basics of how to create a katana like this. You know, there's obviously a lot more details you can put on here. Like usually there's some um, like fabric wrap around the uh, handle here, which um, if you are actually making this for cosplay purposes, I would actually recommend wrapping that with real fabric um, or like string or whatever. Um, but if you just wanted it to print, you know, um, I've done ones in the past where I've just put little diamonds in the side, um, and that seems to work fine. You know, you can really put any design you want in here, which is nice. You really have free reign, and, um, you know, you don't even need to bring in this reference image if you don't want to. But it can really help if you're kind of new to this or just, um, want to do something quick. Okay, guys, well, I hope that was helpful. Um, like I said, I will be making a part two and a part three to this. Part two, we will be making a broadsword. And then part three, I will show you how I slice these up and uh, make them printer ready. Because right now, this would not print very well at all. You'd need a ton of supports and a giant printer to get it um, the size you would want it. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. Um, if you're interested in more Fusion tutorials, like I said, I've got more coming next week. And I've actually got a whole playlist of ones that I've created. I will put a link up in the corner. And that will take you to all of the Fusion tutorials I've done so far. And then, um, like I said, I will be um, adding to this um, in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or if I didn't cover anything very well. Um, let me know. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.